the open the open source assessment module so what is basically edx ora so edx ora is uh, developed for uh, grading open assessment so by open assessment means the essay type questions where there is no automated checking can be done so the strategies that ora implements is grading using machine learning algorithms instructor and co staff grading peer grading self grading none means no grading and basic checks which includes basic or normal spelling and check grammar so uh, so we tried to modify the system and we made a piece uh, which is stands for peer expert auto grade and self evaluation system so the components present in piece are peer self or already told and uh, so next slide so basically this is a flow diagram how will the peer grading will look on so we studied lot of methods and tried to for come up with the, all the problems that a grading system has so basically in a peer grading system the problem is that every peer tries to follow a particular strategy when they grade others and to come up and to cope up with all the strategies you need to ways to mitigate all those actions so the problem that uh, if suppose if i am a student i trying to give my other peers a very high marks in a hope that in turn i will get a also good marks or similarly when it's a relative grading concept you expect that i will i will give other less marks so i in turn it will be affect my grade higher so to come up with all these things we try to make an algorithm and initially when we start the system there is a ca calibration so uh, as we want what is calibration uh, go down here so next refresh so basically what is calibration is calibration is done so that when there is no user profile available when we don't have any statistics at what how is the as your ability, students ability as a grader so we try to calibrate your skills accordingly and calibration is done so that uh, you we can know that how well you can grade so type of grade, uh, calibration we uh, support models are peer expert and none so basic difference between uh, what is the basic expert calibration is that ins uh, ins uh, uh, instructor gives you an assignment he gives you rubrics how to answer it and also he answers it along with a model grade now when you when every student is asked to calibrate the same thing and as soon as the answers the score the scores between the your comparison and the instructor score is matched and based on that you get an incentive score this in incentive score is in turn is in turn as a capability of your as an uh, grader similarly suppose if instructor doesn't want to grade answer he just want to supply the question so what we provides we just provide a peer grading where this comparison is done between your score and the mean average score of your peers so the calibration ensures that uh, for the first time when we don't have any history when we don't have any user profile as soon as the student enrolled in mu we can give him a user profile and tell him that how can we use that data so that the evaluation strategy and the evaluation system can be performed very well uh, so how do we use calibration is that we use based on the calibration uh, every assignment has number of peer graders suppose for instance an assignment has uh, three peer graders so we will divide the whole group or number of students so for 100 students or maybe 300 students so we will divide the students in each group of 100 100 100 based on order by the incentive scores so this ordering means that uh, for the first set of 100 are the best evaluators second set is the medium third are the worst evaluators so the each assignment when the peer it's peer graded so each assignment is went to three respective different uh, peers and the three different peers are chosen from the each from the one group so this ensures that the uniform grading can be done and also this division is helpful when suppose you have to give the weightage to the peers peer grading so instead of uniform weighting you say that i don't trust that peer so much the system just says that it is peer so it can appropriately weight that factor and uh, so apart from this this calibration is done uh, this calibration ordering is done for the fair evaluation but still in spite of all this still the students manage to give uh wrong grades or with work with strategy so basically this is uh, cases which are present in the system so normal cases when you work uh, give grades honestly but what is the over generous case as i told that when a particular students rate other peers over generously in hope that he will get a good grade or just when he perform this particular strategy so this over generous case needs to be handled because a just a uh, system that when the peers have doesn't perform well and you give even uh, good grades so second is creative accounting case just a positive over generous when the person the despite knowing that he has performed well he gives very less grades and a penalized case is when uh, like three four peers decide mutually that we will make this person as a target and give him a less grades 
So this is generally not present in MOOC, but this is a case when, uh, suppose if MOOC provides group project and all, then this uh, case is come up in the accounting. So how do we do normalization in this process? So basically normalization process starts with, we try, show the table, bits. So table, uh, next table, table you saw. So this is a sample grading table, so that how peers have given. So there are like four students, so Peter has given marks to other three and John has given marks to other three, so peer. So ta now to calculate, we calculate IER. So IER basically the score that is uh, given, the marks the sum of the scores, the scores that you have given. And similarly, AER is the summation of all the scores that are given divided by average. So it's an average effort rating. And then we calculate the individual weighting factor. The individual weighting factor is your score, your given individual effort rating divided by average effort rating. And from this, this came to bias factor. So bias factor is how biased were you when we're giving grades. So when you give rating to others, divided by AER, so AER effort rating. And similarly comes from the normalization factor, which is inverse of bias factor. So I can show you the table. Table. Yeah. So example. So for example, like in the first case, the for the Peter, IER was 49, and the average AER was 51. So Peter gave rating to others 60. So this is a case of over in this case. So his bias factor came to 1.17, and this when we transfer to normalization factor, the normalization factor became 0 0.85, and this 0 0.85 reflected uh, to the uh, score. So normalized score now became 4.27. So this from the score that when he is give intentionally 5 to everyone, the score get reduced to 4.27. Similarly, if we could see the normal cases, the rise became. So in the last, if you can see like the uh, Janet A, that column, the 4 give rise to 4.8, 5 to 5.23. So this is just a based on normalization. And so this process is a recursive process and this continues until your bias factor comes in between a range of 0 0.98 to 1.02. When this range came, the scores get normalized, and this is actually the scores what you expect to get. Uh, so apart from that, also normalization is one technique that we uh, try to use to get a fair grading system. Uh, in spite, in say, along with this, we also use an incentive mechanism. So incentive mechanism is the comparison of your score that you give to other between the average peer normalized score. So suppose I give my peer five, while the uh, class gave three. So I get, so I came to know that I gave intentionally more marks, while the average class was giving to that particular peer only three. So this gave me a normalization thing, incentive. And this incentive in turn reflects both in my grades as well as it reflects in my capability as being evaluator. So again, instead of like first time when we use the calibration score to do the grouping, in the, th in the final process we do the use the, this uh, ordering by incentive to group the people. So can Okay, so now I want to show that what is different between EDX Aura, the recently launched module that was released on 1st June only, this Aura, and comparison between the Peace system. So both EDX Aura and Peace provides calibration mechanism, but the difference between calibration is that uh, Aura has a compulsory cal calibration, while Peace doesn't have any cal compulsory calibration. So that depends, we provide flexibility to instructor to which calibration model he wants to choose. So, but an EDX Aura also has some limitation that it provides calibration only for the purpose that it teach how to uh, calibrate. So we also do uh, the system R provide, we provide also do the system, same thing. But in addition to, we also use that calibration score to uh, have an optimal distribution of evaluators. Also, there's a bug in, I think, in Aura that if suppose uh, their students fail the competency six times calibration test, uh, irrespective of what the score he has, he will be promoted to do peer grading. So that is, a, I think, doesn't help much if students uh, just click six times. That will be a bug that uh, won't help. So also the Aura doesn't have any normalization technique that I explained just now. While Peace follow perfect normalization technique so that the scores can be generated and the student actually get what score he deserve. Similarly, no incentive mechanism is there in Aura. Uh, no optimal distribution that is grouping based on the, your incentive score and calibration score. Both provides a good peer review system. So both as a mechanism. So now I will invite uh, some to come. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, now proceeding with the other modules that our P system has. Uh, the, other, the second module is the self-assessment module. As we all know in the traditional grading system, the main focus of the instructor is providing grades. But 
and not much uh, emphasis is given on learning of students. Now, uh, through this self-assessment module, the instructor can use uh, this self-grading uh, module of PEACE to uh, enhance learning and creativity among students. If an instructor thinks that in a course, the enhancement of learning and creativity is the main purpose, he can uh, employ this method. In the self-assessment uh, method, the students are allowed to grade their own assignments based on a uh, evaluation form or rubrics. Now, when the student uh, grades himself on the basis of these rubrics, he tends to reflect on his, uh, on his or her weaknesses, and in the process, uh, the learning is enhanced. Now, when the students uh, grade the, uh, their own assignments, then they uh, mark themselves, and these marks are only considered as their final score. Now, the next module that we have is the expert evaluation. This is in accordance with the traditional process that we have. Here, the instructor can, uh, has the option to choose for expert evaluation. Uh, in this, uh, he can use this expert evaluation when there are less number of students enrolled in a course. He can opt for this method. And uh, here, when the students answer a particular assignment, the, assign the solutions are forwarded to the instructor. And then he grades uh, and he provides these scores. To now, uh, the previous slide. Previous slide. Now, this uh, EDX uh, Aura also has this expert evaluation module, but the, there are slight differences. Uh, both are not expert evaluation is not scalable for a MOOC as it's not possible for an instructor to evaluate tens or thousands of students' uh, copies. And uh, this expert evaluation is used for grading in both the EDX and PEACE. Now, uh, and it is used as a training data set for the machine learning uh, auto graders. And uh, the uh, expert evaluation in our case is also used for solving discrepancy. Like in, uh, if an assignment is given for peer grading, but if a student feels that he has not uh, obtained perfect score, he can uh, report it to the instructor, and the instructor can then opt for uh, evaluating that uh, himself and resolving the conflict. Now, the uh, last module that we have is the auto grader. In the autograder, we will be using the uh, discern API of the EDX, and uh, which has the uh, ease module. And we'll, uh, we will also be uh, integrating various compilers for code uh, checking. Now, apart from using all these, all the four we modules. Have three minutes exactly, so start wrapping up. Uh, apart from using all the individual modules, the instructor also has the option for uh, choosing any combination of the four modules. Like he can choose peer plus self or uh, auto grade plus self grading, and he can assign a, a particular weightage to what he has chosen, uh, what modules he has chosen. Now, the main uh, module that uh, is the self plus peer evaluation that is the most important module of hybrid. Here, the, uh, if the instructor wants that in some course the grades are also important, uh, as well as he wants to enhance the learning, he can opt for the self plus peer evaluation. He can assign a particular weightage to the self and the peer part. In this process, uh, the, when the student answers the assignment, the assignments are offered to uh, are forwarded to both the uh, peer module as well as the uh, students themselves rate their assignments. Now we have two set of scores. One from the uh, what student has given himself, and other from the peer grading module. Now these scores are compared, and if the difference lies beyond a, a certain range, they are normalized, and then the final scores are calculated. If if the uh, difference is not much, like it's in the in a particular range, then the what student has given himself, that scores are only accounted for his final grades. Now I will call Nikit. Uh, okay, there are some differences, which are between the uh, self-grading module in PEAS and EDX Aura. Uh, PEAS does not, uh, EDX Aura does not use this uh, self-evaluation for uh, grading purpose, while in PEAS we can use this uh, as a grading technique also like I explained. We can use self plus peer, so it can be used for grading as well as learning. And there is no incentive normalization uh, in, P, uh, in EDX Aura, while it's, we have incorporated in PEAS. So these are the differences between Aura and Peace. Now I'll call on Nikita to continue. Uh, these are the various uh, stages that uh, we uh, encountered in the process of uh, completing our project. So initially, we started with uh, the study of uh, various research papers. And we came up with uh, our method Peace, which uh, they have just explained. 
and uh, then we built a prototype of this method in Jogit, which is a workflow engine. However, we faced a problem that uh, this prototype could not be integrated with an existing MOOC, that is EDX, and that was our long-term goal. So uh, uh, during that time also the EDX platform uh, code had released in open source, so we shifted to that and started studying about the EDX Aura, and we tried to make enhancements in that. But uh, EDX Aura has not been successfully installed till date, so it was not a practical option. And uh, so uh, during the last three days of our internship, we built a standalone web application in a Django framework of our entire system. And uh, the future scope next of our project is uh, to integrate our system, which we built in Django, with the EDX platform. And uh, we can also build an API for that purpose. And uh, next. These are a few uh, educational application slides that we have included uh, for two of our group members who have, already, who have left right now. So uh, they are on shapes and matrices, uh, educational mathematical applications. And now uh, we would like to show these screenshots of our evaluation. This is the screenshot of our speech evaluation system. So basically, sorry for the UI. The UI cannot be enhanced in just a two days. So the system that's a, this is seeing, it's a, it's an instructor just, side. Just, just a minute, just a minute. Yeah. Why are you showing a system which is built in two days? Don't show. So because it's functional. I, I agree. It's, I'm not saying that you're not made it work. Yeah. yeah. Better not show a system which doesn't work. So let's reset up with uh, whatever you have learned and whatever you have done the challenges. Okay. The future work could be build a system. Yeah. What you have done, I basically the question I want to ask you is, okay. You have implemented a lot of mathematical algorithms, yes, right? as I see it, yes, right? How do you check a mathematical algorithm? Sir, some of the mathematical background that we took was initially from the research papers that we referred. And uh, we tried to do some simulations and also try to have some practical knowledge. So basically the challenge we, we also faced that if we suppose we propose some strategy, we don't know how to get it confirmed. So exactly. That, that was uh, my question. So that we that tried to... nothing to do with your software. That's yeah. why I said, hang on, stop. That is not necessary. Okay. So we always try to do some simulations and also like try to get in some uh, low scale. But actually the problem was that even if we try some experiment, the experimental setup would be just for 100, 200 students. Yeah. While we are talking on the scale for MOOC. So all the strategies that are fa facing this, because any th papers or something which was work, will work for 100, 200 because you just can see any particular case. But the problem was that it was not scalable anyhow to get an experiment. We try, uh, run some experiments on 100 students and also like when we have some feedback forms, we tried to get the scores and normalize when we had internal meetings. So and, uh, that was done, but anything was not able to done from the scale of a move. So we tried to basically stick on the basis of our research papers, uh, which we get and try to combine them. Yes. So again, that was the next question. Yeah. Okay. How do you scale up? How do you scale your thesis was peer evaluation system. Yes, sir. I got one lakh students is what Dr. Patak said. Yes, sir. First course. Yeah. And he wants 10 lakhs. Hmm. Okay. Next course. Okay. That is 10 lakhs. No, no. We are in India. We talk lakhs, not me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So 10 lakhs. So how are you going to implement a peer evaluation for 10 lakhs? Sir. What is the strategy? So strategy, sir, basically is that. Uh, uh, because only in a large scale, only two things, uh, when you go for MOOC, only two scale type of evaluation system can survive. Either you offer machine learning or you offer peer evaluation. So when you offer peer evaluation, you just need to work and focus on two, three things. First is one that how you distribute the paper, like evaluators. So like if you, I attempt an assignment. The main strategy is that how, which three peers or which four peers should judge my papers. That is the main component. Okay. Uh, do you know that in EDX, yeah. okay, if one lakh people start, do yeah. you know how many people finish? So that is how many? How many? Sir, very few. There are only thousand, ten thousand, something like that. Yes, correct. So now coming back to this question, okay? Yeah. Have you ever thought about how will you monitor peer evaluation? Yes, sir. That I, mean, I have assigned you to uh, these three gentlemen over there, and they say I am no longer interested in a course. Why? This, why will they evaluate? Pardon? So we have a sir, like suppose we have an end date and when we, the debt ends and all the debt evaluations are left. So first of all, we evaluate only to those who have attempted the assignment. So that probability goes less that of false uh, be people being reviewed. But still even the then, uh, people will get uh, away from the course. So what we do, we go for a second round evaluation and in this second round we go only for the expert people. 
So the first category when we divide in the case, so three like suppose the three categories. Is that categories. algorithm built into the system? Yes, sir. Which you are done? So no, no, that one is not done. Okay, so that is in your head only. No, sir, in reports. <laughs> reports. <laughs> okay, it is in the reports. So that we have done, no, and that, basically that that is the major theory evaluation. So that was As I sir, see, hmm. what you have done is all mathematical things, etc., which work for a small group. The extension to one million, okay, with this peculiarity of people dropping out. At the drop of a hat, we are talking about free courses. Okay. I mean, if I am supposed to, I, I, my son enrolled me for one course or a course. Okay. Because I am in online education, I didn't <laughs> attend a single thing. Okay. So I plan to have that experience sometime when I got time. Okay. But uh, the danger here is only one. If the you don't run the course properly, okay. Sir, even if you run properly, we, then students will drop. Yeah. I am not sure. Ideally, like Dr. Fatak mentioned the type of student I am, ideally I would like to take a course and only attend the final quiz. Okay. So that you can do it. Without doing any peer evaluation and let them evaluate. No, so that's the There point. have been professors in IIT who wanted to not give me an A in the subjects I like. They did not succeed. <laughs> okay. So for that, sir, because what two so problems that is are there. peer evaluation, the monitoring of peer evaluation is a major challenge. Yes, not Actual algorithms and actual algorithm, as you admit, testing is a is a sir, major thing for any mathematical algorithm. Sir, even proof sir, of concept uh, is very difficult. So till now also like no one course like Edex just started in this July, June only implemented two courses peer evaluation. Ah, but wait, wait, wait. The Edex is much better placed because they have got a lot of history. Yes, sir. Behind them. Okay. So but history. No, new algorithm with no history is very difficult to prove. 